one of them is uh, the, the, the shared sadism, I guess, in a sense. And with you guys, you really set up, um, oh, geez, what's the new character's name? Yeah. Uh, uh, it's Roxanne. Roxanne. Yeah. You set up Roxanne to be um, such a sympathetic character, <clears throat> I think, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see the, the death of her lover and, like, you know, her solitude out in the swamp and all that kind of stuff like that. But, you know, there's something that clicks. Like, she doesn't have to go. After the, after she gets the gun, mm -hmm. she could kind of stop there, right? Right. It shifts gears. Right. It shifts gears from, like, somewhere where you're, like, kind of saying to your... You know, she's looking at her strictly as like a defender to now where she kind of like takes the role as the as the uh, offender mm -hmm. to an extent, you know, and uh, of course, I mean, there's a, a thousand ways you can say the guy had it coming. But like, you know, again, kind of like I've asked a couple people in the decisions that happen with the actors. Was that something that you had planned from writing, like that you wanted that switch to happen, or is that something that you kind of felt happening when you guys were filming it and just figure I'm going to go with this and let it kind of get a little cool here at the end? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> it, um, that, that scene was the first thing that came to me when I was starting uh, writing, and I built the story around that, which is probably the wrong way to approach it because uh, uh, you got to have the beginning, the ending, and the uh, middle and ending. But um, I thought it was critical because uh, she's angry. Of course. You know, I'm angry at, at the inhumanity to humanity. So um, she has uh, lost her life partner. I don't know if that was very clear. Yes. Uh, she lost her life partner. And uh, um, so she, uh, she's like kind of torn open and vulnerable and everything. And then this situation happens upon her. She's, she's fed up. She's had enough. And she's, she's thinking, uh, being a former uh, sheriff's deputy, that uh, uh, with uh, punishment with immediacy, you know, right after the right. act is more, more valid. Right. You know, it sinks in deeper. Of course. And, and like I said, though, you know, in a way, you almost, I mean, of course, I guess this isn't really how people think, but like, in a way, it's almost seemed like it would have been a little bit cleaner and, and less savage if she just like killed the dude mm -hmm. instead of like you know shoving a, a branch, a tree branch, in his <laughs> ass. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and it's a, it's a, I don't know. Maybe I maybe I imagine things too much, but at that that part, I was just like, oh my god, like you know, you just imagine um, how all that must have gone down and how the poor guy must have had to recover after the fact, right? The, uh, you know, it, it kind of only occurred to me recently that all four of these last films have rapes in them. Yeah. You yeah, know, and um, I, I was kind of grouping them on violence. You just figure I put them at the end so mm -hmm. you have a chance to get away, but, um, you know, scenes like that, I, I just imagine, I, I don't know no offense to my friends. I don't know the level of professional that I could ask to act out that scene. Right. And yeah. in, in, in my long, did you guys have relationships with some of these characters? Well, we had uh, a casting had... director. Oh, okay. Because I know. Sorry. No, that's right. I was going to say, why don't you comment on yeah, the we... fact that they they needed rehearsal for that scene? Oh, really? Yeah, that, uh, well, that's we funny because had... I was just talking about that with Siobhan, like that was a thing that we. So you guys actually rehearsed the rape scene. Uh, yeah, we had to, they, they asked for it. They wanted it. They said, we have, we have to rehearse this. You know, oh, wow. Done, right? Because uh, uh, it was, uh, you know, he's, she's yanking down his pants and everything. They wanted to go through the routine. Of course. Dad, so. And we had the advantage, too, of having, it was during the pandemic, so we had excellent actors. Mm -hmm. Everyone was aware. I mean, I believe during the rehearsals, they became, excuse me, during the casting process, they became aware of what, what the role would entail. Right. And actually, um, they actually de designed a device if the rape scene was to be different. Okay. And um, you know the you know for for Matthew, who uh -huh. plays the part of Dean. Right. They actually de devised a device, and we decided to go along with more of a Hitchcockian approach, which was showing less and leaving more 
to the imagination. Right. But everybody was, um, everyone was a working actor, um, uh -huh. with the exception of um, the person who was murdered, who was actually a working dancer and model. Okay. So everyone was a working actor, and um, most of them have degrees in acting or some related capacity. So, so they uh, solemnly took on the, uh, the, the role, kind of, that was yeah. with the right weight to it. And, and the guy that played the part that raped um, the girl at the beginning, um, he has a degree in musical theater. You and, talked um, about him, yeah. like, right? The guy that gets killed. Yeah, the guy that gets hero. killed. That's yeah, correct. he has a degree in musical theater, and I was afraid that he wouldn't be up to the part because he's such a nice guy and he's yeah. our neighbor. And he came home from New York when they shut down for the pandemic. Oh, okay. So um, he assured me that he could do it and then it's Steve the, cast him out on the dock. It's not the kind of scene where you want to bring any Pirates of Penzance into it. Or <laughs> exactly. Like that, right? You kind of uh, cheapen it a little bit. Now I know you guys um, were trying to, or had the option open to have this become a feature. Have you made like any steps toward that, or have you planned? Yeah, uh, we're hashing out the uh, the script. It's gone through quite a few rewrites. Uh, we keep getting it pounded. We do uh, group reads and that sort of thing. Oh, okay, so you've got a cast in mind and everything. Well, uh, yeah, I've got some. Uh, 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 Amanda Seafield. 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 Okay. Super. He's a little ambitious. And uh, John Cena and Jason Alexander, we'd like to have them in the, in, the, in the feature, so that's what we're going to shoot for. But yeah, the feature uh, is, uh, you'll, it, go ahead and, and Well, um, I'm not sure exactly what you were going to say, but the idea is that if you can get the right people in, you can get the financing for it. and. And actually, after that started, I started, I've been taking classes on production financing and, you know, how to get tax credits and what you do with them. And so this would be a pretty big undertaking. Right. Oh, well, how and could it not be? Especially if you actually, have you made any kind of uh, contact outreach toward those people not yet? Not yet. It's, it's not, it's got to be that, it's got to be finished. How, you know? how many, you've been re, this movie is, what, like two years old now? Yes, it's two years old. So you've been writing for the feature length that whole uh, time? Oh, kind of oh yeah, years? but way beyond that. You know, I took okay. actually, this yeah. is a portion of the feature, so I took that portion okay. from the first act, gave it a, a beginning, middle, and end, kind of. And um, so it's pretty much in the first in the feature itself. Okay. And it goes on. That's, uh, you know, I, I respect, I, I've said this a couple of times today, uh, the patience. I think, you know, when I when I get something in my head, I just want to get it out, get it out, get it out. And I and has the, in, in the rewriting and in writing and rewriting and rewriting, do you feel that um, you've stayed on, on course with it and you're just kind of like honing it or has it, keeps it taken a lot? Better. It keeps getting better. So has it changed personalities at all or is it still... Um, not, not personality so much. Uh -huh. Um, no, I, I think, uh, this is a taste of it. I think this, uh, right. short one. And, uh, and we also have script coverage where we have professional people that read scripts and do criticism. Oh, okay. Um, so we've had script coverage and then, you know, he, he gets, gets constantly gets pounded, you know, oh, and awesome. keep going over and, and finding those weak spots and correcting them. Because sometimes, right, you know, you know what you want to say, you know what you want to happen, but you just kind of can't, you know, it just doesn't come out. It's just sometimes awkward. you just don't see yeah. it. You just, uh, it, for some reason, you just overlook it, you know, and this, uh, uh, it'd be great if somebody would criticize the, the film so we could find out, you know, where we're lacking. I'm sure yeah. I, I felt, I cringed at some parts, you know. Oh, we, so, well, uh, I think whenever you look at your own work, you know, a little bit removed, right, like, you, you kind of just start seeing the stuff you would have been done better today mm -hmm. or something like that. But I, I'm pretty sure to everybody else it seemed, uh, it seemed pretty good. I, mean, I guess I don't know what's in your head, but I, I, I always enjoy uh, watching it. Chris, um, I've got a question for you. A uh, quick question. Um, have you seen Deliverance? Remember I have. Remember Deliverance, 1973? Yeah, Squeal. You remember the, yeah, you remember, that's what everybody remembers, is that scene with Ned Beatty. Remember that you know, I like always think of, ironically, the, uh, the Burt Reynolds, when Burt Reynolds nails the guy with the arrow, yeah. which kind of is reminiscent of your film, but yeah. 
But uh, what do you what do you remember of that film? What's the scene that you remember? Of course, historically, it's uh, squeal like a pig. Yeah, right? squeal like a pig. So uh, I'm thinking that uh, to remove the the stick scene would be uh, similar to that. It, oh, it's gonna, it's gonna it's gonna it always causes a reaction. I guess when I say uh, change personality, I'm not talking about the stick scene. Mm -hmm. You know, I again, I think that's uh, I think that's fine right where it is. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I mean more in the sense like when you sit on something that long, I think it's kind of, uh, you just see other options. Like, cause I remember when we first talked about it, I had mentioned to you, like, you know, the hint of like the voodoo murder of her, um, of her girlfriend or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, you called it, it the voodoo murder death scene. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the voodoo murder death scene. And you were like, oh, we, you know, we're really kind of not focusing it on that. And who knows, two years later, has that become more of a part of the script? Or, you know what I mean? Like, well, the things like that happen. What happens is that Steve doesn't let me know. And see, now I see where that fits more into the script than I saw before. Oh, okay. But the crucifix was my idea. Um, you know, I just happened to... Uh, Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> it, <is. laughs> it wasn't actually a crucifix. I think it was a ros rosary. I'm okay. not Catholic, so I get my... It was a crucifix. Was it a crucifix? Yeah, it was a crucifix. Okay. Yeah, so um, I didn't necessarily mean taking out. I mean, I've, I've, ninety percent of the things I watch are violent, for better or for it's worse. It's part of the magic, though, in the fact that you actually have a flawed character. Because I mean, it would be more canned if mm -hmm. she just followed the normal path, right. which would be to be completely perfect in how, how right. she dealt with it. Can we imagine any of us being in that situation and just right. being really perfect? Yeah. And to be honest, Roxanne is just fed up. Yeah. She's fed and, up. And she got fed up. She quit being a sheriff's deputy, moved out to her grandfather's cabin, and um, he's not there right now. But um, she was fed up, and, you know, but she just had is, enough. And, the, and that's what's important. The dog's there, and that's the most the important part. The dog is there, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Buster. Anyway. Um, guys, thank you so much. Thank that you was awesome talking to you. Nice talking to you. Um,